Today I'm going to give a quick update on my Wi-Fi system here on my property. I have about 10 access points and it's the TP-Link Omada system. And Omada has gone through and updated their interface, which is a big change. You know, they have really the same hardware. Uh, this is actually an older Wi-Fi 6 setup. I have a Wi-Fi 7 on my property. I have a video going through covering that and covering about five acres of, of coverage. But here I want to talk about the actual interface of how you go in there and look at um, either your status, uh, optimization, uh, if you want to add VLANs, if you want to add more WAN connections or you know guest networks or any of those types of features, it's through their interface here. So I'm going to show here is what they call the 6.0, which is the you know version 6.0 plus interface. And so now there's lots of ways to get to this. You can use a computer uh, to do that. You can use a tablet. Uh, and use the web interface, or you can use the tablet or phone and their Omada app. And right, before we get too far, I have to share this because this is pretty cool. I just got this in the mail actually today, and this is celebrating 20 years of YouTube. Now, I've not been around uh, quite the 20 years. I think I officially joined in 2007. So I'm about 18 years in, but this is uh, pretty cool. They just sent me it's just a piece of cardboard. But it is um, numbered, so number 637 out of 1934. I don't know what 1934 is all about, but pretty cool they send that to me. So congrats to YouTube being uh, two decades old now, almost uh, old enough to drink. And if you like this video, do consider hitting this thumbs up button right down below in the video on YouTube. And then also consider subscribing to my channel so you can get more content like this in the future. What I'm going to show you here is on my tablet, but I'm going into their web interface. And I have to say one thing I did learn that now I'm using a hardware controller. So I actually have a OC 300 in my setup that I'm using to act as the controller. If you're using the cloud one, the cloud one, for whatever reason right now, is actually one step ahead. and actually has a couple more features than even I have, even though I'm on 6.0. So if I look at me, I'm on 6.0036 on here. But let's just look. This is the global view. So if I had lots of sites, I'd see more of them. What you're probably going to go in is into your actual uh, site. So here I clicked on Nader Tater Wi-Fi 7. And this is my, if I click here to get to the overview, this is typically the dashboard and then the overview page here. And this is a all new layout. So the way it has the categories on the left side uh, is really quite nice because it has been four sections. It has management, monitoring, configuration, and maintenance. So that really helps find where you want to go uh, much quicker just by having those categories. But then here on the dashboard, you also have four tabs at the top there of overview, topology, clients, and traffic. And so this really hits at most of the stuff I typically want to look at. So I really do like the way that they've laid, laid this out. Here you can also see I have zero pending alerts. But if I had a WAN down or if I had some type of um, issue or error going on, that will show up right here on this main page. I could click on it and get more information. I get a quick overview here of uh, what is going on with my uh, main router, my ISP activity, any load balancing that I'm doing. And I can see all my clients and my devices here. Uh, I can see my top clients. I can also look at just general activity here. It's kind of dead because it's late at night. And then the bottom here, I have a AP density as well. And then here under the activity, you can see it's showing internet activity. Um, so there's number of devices as well as the pink and blue is the in and out um, data. But then if I click over to Wi-Fi, I get just local Wi-Fi. You can see I actually have a lot higher. You know, there it's showing 164, 165 gigabytes of data transferred um, during this day. And that's on Wi-Fi, so it's internal. That's because I have a lot of Wi-Fi cameras that go to a local NVR. If I go to internet, you can see I used about 29 or 30 gigs of data. Um, that actually went out into the um, the internet. And then down at the bottom here, we also have AP density. This is helpful because this shows you um, what type of signal your different um, clients are getting in. The reason this one is down in that orange area is because I only have one client. So I clicked on that, that's my pond outdoor. And you can see I only have one client on there and it has that, you know, kind of meteor um, signal level there but you can click on all these and you can really get a lot more details right from this home page I go up here to topology this one I really do like it I'm a very visual person and so I really do like now obviously on this tablet it's a little bit small so I have to zoom in to see all of these different uh, devices but it's really cool because it just breaks down uh, very clearly what is my network uh, connection so I can see I have three WANs on the left side so three different 
um, are, are hooked up here onto the main router and then that goes over here and I can click on this and get some more information between these. Okay, so on this one I can get through here and I can get to all 12 of my connected devices as well as all 100 give or take clients by going through this tree here and I can expand or contract any of these by clicking the little green uh, button there that will go in there and expand or contract uh, each of those groups. I can click on any of these clients groups and get some more information. But one of the really cool features about it is actually this network filter on the left here. Right now it's set up for showing you all network. But if I, and actually I don't have a lot of VLANs, I only have really one main VLAN. But if I click on that one and click on that ELSIS2 VLAN, what's really cool is it highlights what devices are in that VLAN. And I can also add uh, new VLANs um, and very quickly uh, select them. I'll show that as well. But then I can also click based off SSID. So if I want to see just my five gigahertz ones, or if you had to guess one, you can uh, filter that out and quickly just be showing uh, those devices. So let me go to all network and then um, now I'm on the five gigahertz. Now I can see if I expand through these, I can see which devices are actually on a specific channel. Now you can also um, in here, as I said before, um, make some uh, channel uh, adjustments. Okay, the next I can go to clients over here. And so this is going to load up obviously all my clients and what type of signals they're getting. So it gives you a quick update. And this is one place where the, um, the cloud-based one right now is actually giving you a little bit better information because even on the overview tab, they have like a health score, which gives you a health for your um, ISP, I think for your Wi-Fi. And so it gives you um, a good idea if you need to optimize anything. And they have optimization tools built in here. But this one's still very helpful. Um, here it shows you how many clients I have, how many are wired, how many are wireless. I can get an idea of how long they've been online. I can also get an idea of uh, what type of um, uh, traffic and signal that they're getting. And this would be a good one to look at because if you had something that had a lot of traffic but bad signal, then you probably want to look into it because it's a device that gets used a lot but it doesn't have the best signal, so you want to maybe either uh, consider changing something up there. Uh, so this would uh, let you uh, do some of that work uh, in here as well. Then click over to the traffic tab, and this is just showing you uh, my traffic. I could again break it down uh, about uh, in and out, as well as uh, specific clients and specific bands, how much they're actually sending. Now here on the device list, this is really uh, something similar to the topology, except it just has them all listed out there, it gives me the IP address. Shows me that they're connected, um, my version, all that kind of stuff. If I have a firmware update, I can also reboot them right here on the right side by pressing that power button. So if I want to reboot any of them, I can just quickly uh, do that uh, quite easily. And I can go in here a little bit more details. If I go to like one of my switches, for example, I could go in there and now um, look at my specific ports and change those. You can also do some batch actions on both the, the device as well as things like the um, the ports between switches. So I can go in there and say, select a lot of different ports on different switches and assign them to a specific VLAN if I wanted to. So they've really added some more capabilities there that makes it easier to adjust settings quickly. Now if I go to the network configuration and then I go over here to a virtual WAN, this is where I can quickly set up a virtual WAN uh, network. All right, so here on the left side, um, the network configurations, if I go here to the network settings and click LAN, then this pulls up this page, and this is where you can see, again, you get a, um, a little uh, full topology map, but now I can uh, click on these different VLANs, and again, it will show you these two just go between these two switches, um, and then what I can do is I can click add, and now it's very easy to add a virtual LAN. I just give it a name, I tell it um, what the main device is, the router. I can uh, give it a number for it. I can give it a subnet, DSCP, and then I can go through here. All right, so if I just do this test one, and I click Next over here, and then it will allow me to now pick my devices. All right, so in here, it even gives you a little bit of a tutorial where it's showing you I just select the device, and then if I want to select multiple ports, I can just literally click and drag over that hit confirm and then my new VLAN is set up and I of course can go back and add other devices back to that at a later time if I want to modify it. So another change is the isolation setting. So I can click over here and then my VLANs that I have set up that I can isolate, I can just take them from being interconnected to now isolated and hit apply and now they will become an isolated network if you wanna have something separate. 
Okay, so as I mentioned before, the cloud-based one has a little bit better health score, but even in here on this one, if I go to network configurations and then I click the wireless LAN, there is a wireless LAN optimization. They had this uh, before, but this new one is a little bit uh, more user-friendly. Uh, so I can go in here and I can run an optimization on it and it will uh, help improve. So it's looking at both your power output of each AP as well as the channels to make sure you have the least amount of interference. So you can run this and see um, how it can improve your performance. Okay, under the device configuration, I go to the switch ports, and then I can go in here and now I can select lots of these ports if I want to. So I can just go through here and click multiple ports if I know um, I want to do a similar change to all of them. So this is like a batch change. And then so I can click edit selected ones. And of course you can filter based off if they're already on a VLAN or whatnot. So you could change them. Uh, but now I can change it right here where I can uh, change the labels. I could change VLANs. I could go ahead and switch all those over at once. So it's really handy for, you know, just cleaning up the optimization, some, or sorry, the uh, assignment before some of that had to be a little bit too manual or uh, one by one. So on the clients, one thing that they have touted is that it has improved its ability of recognizing what type of device it is. I would say it is better. It's not perfect. Uh, for example, I have way more than five cameras, but it did detect automatically that there's five of them are cameras. And then it's trying to break it out into, you know, audiovisual stuff, uh, mobile devices, smartphones, you know, uh, it picks that up. So that does help with it because that helps you just be quicker at identifying and applying rules to specific categories of devices. Okay, well, this was just a quick rundown of some of the top level stuff. If you have a specific question, do put it down in the comments below. I do try to read those. And then I'll put some links to some of uh, other information about this 6.0 interface. So if you want to read up more about it, watch some other videos, uh, I'll put them out there for you as well. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.